you watch the 2023 Masters, you probably noticed some incredible watches on the players' wrists. With me today, I have Marco Ferrante to talk about some of these watches and go over, you know, anybody outside of the Rolex sponsorship. I know there was a ton of Rolexes at the Masters, but there were a few heavy hitters that I want to go over. Before we get into that, though, we do have a new sponsor for the show, graphicrugs.com, and we are giving away a free... This was a very limited edition Tiffany Nautilus six and a half foot rug. Um, this, I, I, I remember when they first dropped it, we got one in the office. It's in Anna's office right now. All you have to do to enter to win this rug is follow at graphic underscore rugs on Instagram. Comment graphic rugs on this video. And seven days from the release of this video, we'll pick a winner and they will ship you your big ass six and a half foot Tiffany Nautilus rug pretty cool it is pretty cool yeah um, be sure to join the the giveaway yeah why yeah. not no i mean th we love the rugs we have them all over our office so I, you know we thought it would be a really good collaboration with these guys and uh they have a whole lot of other designs you're sitting on one we are sitting on one they created a custom one for us with the logo pretty cool um so have you watched the masters are you into gore golf anything like that yeah, like uh, I like putting, you know, putting for a price, beating tracks at the at the at yeah, the game. Yeah. But uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to golf itself, I don't think I could hit a ball if it was standing right in front of me, which it usually is. But yeah, no, unfortunately, Why? I suck at golf. You haven't been to like I the just, driving like, range or anything. Yeah, I mean, like I'll hit a ball like eighty yards if I'm like I don't know. The technique is just not there. I have two left feet. It's yeah. just it, it's just not good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually planning to take everybody out to top golf, top golf yeah. okay. Um, okay. so we could practice some of those drives um and then maybe we can actually have like a luxury bazaar open you know where we invite i think adrian's winning that one he'll smoke that no, no no we're gonna have, have, have to invite him? some like professional players oh yeah, yeah you know okay. everybody will be assigned a professional player to work with oh yeah, yeah that's that would be fun yeah, yeah so i'm not a big golfer i did watch the masters or at least parts of it because what's interesting to me, other than the, the actual game itself, is what are they wearing? What are they doing? Um, who's there? You know, I love seeing like celebrities that are there. That's always cool. But the Masters are sponsored by Rolex, so you would assume everybody has a Rolex on their wrist. That's actually not the case of this year. Um, but we do know that there are other sponsors such as Audemars Piguet Golf, and you know, so we're gonna get right into it. Let's go with you know the number one. Um, Number one golfer, I'm going to say now. Again, number one is, is a very relative term. He's no longer number one, but Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods was roll wearing a deep C 116660. Yeah, James uh, Cameron, if I'm not mistaken, right? No, no, it wasn't James Cameron. Yeah, yeah, it was a regular, oh. yeah. So I've seen him wear before uh, when he won the Masters, the last time he won the Masters a couple of years ago. He was actually wearing a James Cameron. So yeah, it, interesting. I'd be shocked if it wasn't the yeah. same watch. I, was he wearing it while playing or no, no, at the he press wore it conference? After. They, okay. they rarely yeah, wear a watch. Yeah, yeah. yeah they rarely I mean, I, you know, it's funny because like, you you see tennis players wearing RMs during a game because they're so light. You don't feel right, right. why isn't anybody sponsored by RM and wearing one during playing? Uh, I mean, Bubba Watson is. I'm well, pretty, he's yeah, an I ambassador guess, I guess, for RM, but I don't think he. Wears but he's not it. wearing it while playing. That's I what I mean. I think the issue is right. So with tennis, it's not as so with golf. Um, like you twist your wrist as you're swinging, right? If I'm not mistaken, so it's pretty restrictive. If you have a watch on wrist, yeah. if you have something strapped, it might restri restrict your wrist motion. Um, so I'm assuming that's probably why they don't do it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, who knows? I, again, I, I suck know. at golf, so. So Tiger has represented numerous brands over the years. In the '90s, he was with Tudor. Then he went over to Tag Heuer, and as of 2011, he's been with Rolex. Um, and obviously, he's showcasing that that sponsorship pretty well, you know, with the watches press conferences. The next one that um, had a, a interesting watch. Now again, it's not you know none not all of these watches are like amazing you know six figure crazy watches, but Colin Marukawa had an Omega Speedmaster 57 Chronograph. Um, very cool looking watch. Yeah. Very cool representation. Now he is an ambassador of Omega. Yeah. You know, so he's representing the brand. Typically, he's seen wearing a stainless steel or gold um, Seamaster 300. But for the game, you know, and this weekend for the Masters, he was wearing the Speedmaster. Yeah, it's interesting one. So the Speedmaster 57 was a release, I want to say, they did last year, Omega. And they've been pushing it hard among their yeah. ambassadors. Like, I've seen uh, Andrew Garfield, I think is his name, yeah. the actor. He's worn that a ton. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple others that, that, that are sponsored by... 
Yeah, yeah. So Andrew, yeah, yeah. That's that was the second one. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So so he's worn it a ton. I've seen them pushing that watch among ambassadors a lot. So it's not shocking to see that on it. No, it's it's definitely a cool release that they had, and and I personally I like it. I'm not really an Omega guy, but I like that one. So I like that watch. I don't. I, I like the size of it, 40 millimeters. I like the fact it's a new movement, manual winding. I don't like the design. I, I wish hmm. so. So the Fine. whole steel bezel design. It's nice. It's not what I prefer. So it goes back to that original Omega Speedmaster because Speedmaster actually started out not as the moon watch as we know it today. It was a racing watch uh, before the Rolex Daytona even it came to be. So it was like originally a racing watch became the moon watch when they won the contract for NASA. Um, so that's kind of where it ties into the Speedmaster history. But I wish they did a Speedmaster, like the first Omega in space and 40 millimeters, more designed towards that because it's it's a great look great movement great everything i just don't love that it's just clean it. you know what i mean like yeah. it's very it's a two register simple yeah it's two register yeah. chronograph what we call a bicompact chronograph uh with a six o'clock date I mean, it's just faultless right design i guess wise. yeah i guess another way to look at it is it's too simple it's just yeah. kind of like blah you know i, I that's a, that's another look on it um next guy that we have is brooks kipka now he was wearing a panda daytona obviously made by rolex Typically spotted wearing a rose gold sky dweller. Um, and I think the other one was either a sea dweller or a D. No, I think it was a sea dweller. Typically he's wearing a sea dweller. Obviously for the masters, he rocked the panda. Now that's just a clean choice. So. Yeah, I mean, this is a timeless classic. I think honestly the Panda Daytona, the 116 LN, right? I think they really perfected the design yeah. of the Daytona. Um, I've seen video and pictures of the new one, yeah. and I think it's like a little bit boxier. I don't like the subdials being a little bit smaller. <laughs> it the, reminds me of that panda picture that <laughs> is all over Instagram. Yeah, that meme is hilarious. Yeah. And even the, the what's it called, the bezel. Yeah. So the, the steel bezel where they put the ceramic insert, basically, I don't, I don't love that look compared to the all ceramic bezel that it used yeah. to be. So I, I think that's going to go down as, as a future collectible, especially because the, the run. So if you consider, you know, uh, essentially Rolex did the four digit Daytonas from the seventies all the way to 88, mm -hmm. I think was the Z introduction of the Zenith. Then Zenith was 88 to about 2000. Then 2000 to 2016 was 116520. So that was, you know, these are long production runs. Uh, the yeah. 116500 essentially was from 2016 to uh, pretty much the the 2023. So yeah. we're, we're talking about the shortest production yeah. run since the six, the four digit reference Daytona is actually. So really it is a good time to pick one up and, and hold on to it forever. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, then we have the, the biggest hitter that we had on the, you know, the masters with Bubba Watson. Now Bubba Watson was wearing the RM3802 Bubba Watson limited edition, yeah. limited to 50 pieces, market price around $2 million. I mean, this thing is insane. So this is a new pink one, right? Yeah, this is the pink one. I yeah, mean, yeah. this thing is it's really, really interesting looking. Um, I don't know how well pink will go with most people, but have you actually seen one on a secondary market? Has any been offered anywhere? I haven't seen one yet. Um, I will say this, this watch will be, um, I think, hugely popular. Uh, I think also you have to take into consideration how difficult a watch like that must have been to make, right? Because, uh, uh, you know, ceramic is not naturally pink. So you have to infuse it with dye, yeah. right? So so to infuse ceramic with dye like that and manipulate it to the, the way that Richard Mills does. Is it does, ceramic? It's not like their TPT material? It, oh, actually, no, you're right. It's carbon. Yeah. Sorry. It's carbon yeah. that they infuse with pink dye. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, it's, it's actually even looking. worse. So carbon, you know, with pink it dye. It has to be difficult. Yeah, it must be crazy. But that's why it's, well, that and the fact that it's above a Watson, that's what's navigating the price to, to be above $2 million. Um. Our next one, I think, is probably my favorite. Victor Hovland was wearing two types of Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Perpetual calendars. He wore the white ceramic and the blue ceramic. So he switched it up between like the press conferences. Damn. Okay. Um, he is an Audemars Piguet golf representative and ambassador. He even had like the hoodie, you know, trademarked or branded with Audemars Piguet. Those two watches are amazing. Uh, market price on them. Yeah, so white ceramic, you're going to be looking, I want to say around the $325,000 range. A blue ceramic, there's just not that many yeah. out there. So it's like, you know, pick your price kind of thing <laughs> at this point. Yeah, it's a, uh, listen, I've seen them posted like well over 700, which I wow. think is uh, like, a, it's, it's an absurd price. Obviously, yeah. I think realistically, it'll be, it'll probably sell or settle around that 550 or so, maybe $600,000 range, which for, for a non-precious metal ceramic, you know, technically brittle watch is absolutely outrageous but it's i've seen that watch now on like in videos and other celebrities mm -hmm. wearing it 
It's so distinct. It's it's, it's unmistakable, yeah. right? That blue is beautiful. You know when they first came out with it, and like there was the monochrome. Actually, me and Adrian and Roman did a did a video with uh, reacting to it, and even Adrian was like, "I wanted this to be released, but I was like, oh, that's a little weird." Um, but ever since then, I have to say it's really grown on me, and yeah. I'm like, okay, that blue when they first showed it versus today is different. The funny thing about that watch is that that can't be your only watch. It has oh, no, to it be like I feel a, like it can be. no because imagine yeah. like it won't go with every outfit. It doesn't work in every occasion. Like yeah, it's bright true. blue. Like, I mean, bright is is an exaggeration, yeah. but it's a very distinct blue. Like you said, I mean, it's yeah. visible from miles away. And if you're going to let's say a wedding, you know, and you want to wear your nicest watch, and that is your nicest watch, it doesn't. I mean, unless you wear a blue suit. Yeah, I mean, listen, a perpetual calendar, first of all, is atypical for a dress watch anyways. Yeah. Technically, it's supposed to be time only on a leather strap. Uh, so certainly a ceramic bracelet watch and case uh, watch is not typical. But, I mean, there's no more rules anymore. You could That's true. Yeah. You can wear whatever you want. Our next one also happens to be the winner of the 2023 Masters is uh, John Rahm. Am I pronouncing his last name right? Rahm? <laughs> you tell me. Right. Yeah, you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, so he was wearing a Rolex Sky Dweller 326-934. Um, he is a Rolex ambassador and typically he wears Daytonas, he wears Pepsis, he wears GMT master, you know, models. Obviously here he chose the, the sky dweller. I'm not really sure why, but, um, that's a solid representation of the watch. And at yeah. being the winner, he got the most FaceTime, most mm. FaceTime, most screen time, screen most time. screen time on that watch and on himself. Yeah, so I mean, a uh, blue sky dweller in steel is about as classy and sophisticated as you can get. Uh, it's a bigger size. He is, as far as what I've seen, like not a small yeah, guy. So, so it makes sense for for somebody like him uh, to be wearing that watch. And listen, it's just a classy, sophisticated, perfect everyday kind of Rolex for for a larger, you know, a larger larger man. Yeah. Uh, some of the other ones that we saw, Gary Player was wearing a Rolex Day Day Green Dial 18 karat yellow gold, uh, 228-238. Yeah, that's a nice one, the 228-238, almost with that kind of matte green dial. Yeah. The it's, master it, green dial. Actually, yeah, it's the master, yeah. master's green. <laughs> actually, I didn't even, good one. Either. It is the master's green. I didn't actually consider that, but yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's honestly become one of the most collectible day dates right up there with the rose gold olive dial anniversary model. They kind of trade actually, I would say about the same. So actually, no, sorry, the yellow actually trades at a premium to the rose gold. So yeah, it's it's a very popular choice. I'm, I'm a big fan of that one actually. I think it's almost like a runner up to the John Mayer. Yeah. Um, next one we had is Phil Mickelson. Before playing, he was wearing a Daytona Oyster Flex, uh, the white gold with the gray dial. And then while playing, he was wearing a Rolex Cellini, cause Cellini, Cellini, Cellini Cellini, <laughs> Sostello, 5320. Nice. Is that the moon face? Uh, no. Like this is, it, it is the simplest one. I'll show you. Huh. Super simple. Nothing interesting about it whatsoever. Okay. But this is not the first time that he's worn it. Yeah. Um, you know, and he wore it while playing. He wore this while That's playing. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't know of any golfers really. I can't think of any that really play while golfing with a watch. Because generally... It's so you shouldn't play golf with a watch. Obviously, RM designed the Bubba Watson to withstand the shock, mm -hmm. you know, whenever you uh, impact a golf ball. Uh, but you shouldn't technically wear a watch while playing golf, otherwise, you're going to be left with a really expensive service bill. Now, Rolex is one of the few brands I think uh, that could probably withstand those kind of shocks and bumps, but yeah, I, I don't I'm know about the surprised. Cellini. Yeah, it's no, but I mean, Rolex typically you makes know. their their Cellini even their dress watches. Movement. Yeah, it's it's they're pretty much all the same, same kind of movements, same family of movements. Yeah. Okay. Next one, we have Rory McIlroy, which was wearing an Omega Speedmaster 57 chronograph with a green dial. Now this one is better looking just because of that green dial, that sunburst yeah. looking dial. That's cool. Um, it's a nicer looking watch than the, the, just the plain Jane one. Yeah. So I, I, I do respect this one now. Again, I assume he is an Omega. Yeah, he's, a, he's sponsored by. He's been sponsored by Omega now for a while. Probably one of my favorite choices in a Masters war, Sergio Garcia, who okay. was wearing an Omega Moon Swatch Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting choice for the game. Um, that's the one with like the the baby blue color, yeah, yeah, yeah. white strap. Um, that I feel like you could wear because yeah, yeah. you don't even feel it on a wrist. Now, it's very likely it will not withstand any of the the forces. Um, but it is an interesting one. 
And then we have Tom Kim, which also came in w as a um, Audemars Piguet brand ambassador, rocking a double balance wheel open work, work ceramic. Yeah. Um, that that's, thing, a, that's a heavy hitter. Yeah, this yeah. Is, that's, yeah. A, that's about the polar end opposites of the, yeah. of the watch. <laughs> what do you think that one's going for? Uh, so I actually just sold one recently, ceramic double balance for 300,000. So, okay. Yeah, so it's right there. It's funny because like, I love this watch. Um, I would prefer it over the white ceramic or even the blue ceramic. And the fact that it's an open worked, you know, yeah. like it, it's just, it's much cooler. So I'll say this actually, I've seen before the open work ceramic perpetual um, hot take. I actually think it's too busy. Yeah. So you have the skeleton yeah. with the perpetual calendar complication in yeah. ceramic. It's a lot going on. I like the skeleton double balance wheel because it's just, it's, it's a skeleton open work movement. That's time only. There's no date, no frills, nothing. Yep. And just a ceramic case and bracelet. I think it's just a knockout. It's one of the nicest watches I've ever held in my hands. And listen, AP is the king of skeleton. So I think it's just a great watch. Uh, yeah, I'm actually working on an interview with Gerald Genta, um, going through, you know, some of the questions that I would have for him and I'm going to ask him about this one. That, that's, that's actually, that's actually good. I'm glad, by the way, when you, uh, mentioned Omega Moon's watch Uranus, we didn't have another porthole incident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, people love that. <laughs> that was a that, good, that was a that, that caused was, people to just laugh at us class, laughing about it. Yeah. Um, that's all I have for the 2023 masters. I, I think it was a, a, again, a good showing all in all both, you know, the game and the watches. We'll see next year what, you know, if there's any difference, if anything interesting pops up. Um, if anybody's wearing some of the new Rolex models that were released this year, that would be pretty cool to see. Um, again, if you like this episode, if you like what we're doing here, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, uh, write a review on a podcast if you're listening to this. Let us know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. And if you want your chance to win a free six and a half foot Tiffany Nautilus graphic rug, Follow at graphic underscore rugs on Instagram. Comment graphic rugs on this video and we'll choose a winner in seven days. Otherwise, have a great day. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Marco. Sweet.